guys and welcome to the latest episode of Miss Ashodi's Snapshot Science. Now in today's episode we're going to be looking at biotechnology. Now hopefully by the end of this video you're able to one state why bacteria are used in genetic engineering and also in biotechnology. We also want to then go on to look at how and describe how yeast is used to make bread and finally we want to explain why and how biofuels are used. Okay so put that piece of bread down let's get right into it. Now, the first thing we want to look at is what is biotechnology, okay? Now, biotechnology involves using living organisms to carry out processes to make substances that we want, okay? Now, this term is only used when we're making reference to microorganisms or when we use plants and animals to make substances other than food, okay? So that's what biotechnology is. We want to create something, okay, a substance. Now, we've been using microorganisms for years. We've used microorganisms such as yeast to make bread and alcohol. We've used microorganisms such as uh, bacteria to make cheese and yogurt. Okay, so microorganisms are very useful. And microorganisms are also very useful in biotechnology and genetic engineering. And there's specific reasons for this because these microorganisms have specific traits. So let's look at them. The first thing is bacteria and fungi, which are microorganisms, they're very small which means that they don't take up a lot of space, which means that they're easy to use in a laboratory envir environment, okay? They also, bacteria and other microorganisms, reproduce very quickly, okay? And finally, they can be used to make a range of different chemical substances. So this is the first reason why uh, microorganisms are used in biotechnology and genetic engineering. However, if you think about microorganisms, such as bacteria and fungi, they are also, okay, just bacteria and fungi. So nobody has an issue with you using bacteria and fungi for biotechnology, for example. Okay, there will be no ethical issue. You have no protesters protesting outside of your door. No, no bacteria. Nobody cares. Okay? Another advantage of using bacteria uh, in genetic engineering now. Bacteria have the same genetic code as humans. So this means that we can take a gene from a human cell and place that gene into a bacterial cell. Okay? And this bacterial cell can then be used to produce a human protein. For example, insulin. This is the way that insulin can be made out of the human body. And we're going to study this in a few lessons time. Okay? Now, if you remember bacteria, they have a loop of DNA known as a plasmid, okay? Now, it's easy to move plasmid, plasmid sorry, from one cell to another cell. So it's easy to move genes from one cell to another cell, okay, by moving the plasmids, okay? So this, therefore, this is another and final advantage of using microorganisms for genetic engineering and biotechnology, okay? Now, let's look at another microorganism. Let's look at yeast. Yeast is a single-celled fungus, Okay, yeast has been used, as we mentioned before, for baking and other processes, such as making alcohol. Okay, now, all living cells carry out respiration and aerobic respiration. Yeast can also carry out anaerobic respiration, so it can respire anaerobically. Now, when yeast respires anaerobically, it uses glucose, the sugar, to make ethanol, which is essentially the alcohol, and carbon dioxide, and energy is given off from this process. Okay, now... This ethanol is essentially the alcohol. So this is one way that yeast is used to make alcohol. Okay, in this process, this anaerobic respiration of yeast is known as fermentation. Okay, so a very key and important um, uh, role yeast has to play. And let's look at why this is very important. Because we have biofuels. Now, if you're a normal person, you are afraid of fossil fuels because they are greatly increasing the impact of greenhouse gases on our environment, okay? Unless you're Donald Trump, who doesn't think uh, global warming is real. However, most of us are looking for an alternative. We want to find something that is greener than fossil fuels. And here's where biofuels come into play. Biofuels can be used as an alternative for fossil fuels, okay? And what we can do with biofuels is we can use plants, and these plants will essentially make sugars, okay? And these sugars will be used by yeast in fermentation, all right? And this sugars, these sugars 
and will be used in fermentation, as I just mentioned, sorry, to make ethanol. Now this ethanol can be used. This ethanol becomes a bioethanol. And the ethanol can be used as a fuel or a biofuel. Okay, so this is, an, this is an alternative to using fossil fuels, okay? Now, how do we make bioethanol or the biofuel? We can use crops, such as maize crops, in this process. So the maize crops, essentially, first of all, is broken down by the enzyme amylase. Okay, amylase, as you um, will break down uh, the maize crops in, from starch, which is the polysaccharide, down to the disaccharide, okay, which is maltose, and that maltose will essentially, eventually be broken down into glucose. Okay, now, we have the glucose. Now, the yeast will use the glucose, all right, during anaerobic respiration. And when the yeast uses the glucose during anaerobic respiration, this is fermentation, as we mentioned, it will produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. Now, this ethanol that is produced can be extracted by distillation, all right, and the ethanol can be used as a biofuel, as we mentioned, as a fuel, okay? Now, Pure ethanol, it can be used as a fuel, but if you were to use it in cars, for example, the car has to be modified first. So one thing that um, is done is the ethanol, the biofuel now, is mixed with petrol, which is a fossil fuel. Now I know you think, oh, well, we're still using fossil fuels, but instead of somebody using 10 litres a week of fossil fuels for their car, they now use maybe 5 litres of fossil fuels and 5 litres of a biofuel. So it's a green-up process, all right? Now, by combining the two, the issue, uh, one disadvantage, is that ethanol does not contain as much energy per litre as the fossil fuels do. Okay, but bioethanol is a really good alternative. All right, let's look at the advantages and why I've said it's really good. Number one, it's sustainable. If we need more fuels, we'll just plant more crops and go through the same process. All right, it reduces the amount of carbon dioxide it adds to the atmosphere because the maize crops will take think back to your carbon cycle now. The maize crops will take in the carbon dioxide. Well, yes, okay. And the maize crops, when we use burn these biofuels, the carbon is essentially returned to the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. So it's a short cycle. However, when we burn fossil fuels, we're releasing carbon um, as carbon dioxide from millions of years ago. So this is a huge problem, okay. Now let's look at the disadvantages of using biofuels. Number one, if you're going to plant lots of crops like maize, etc., it's going to take up lots of land. This land can be used to um, grow food for people to eat, okay? Large quantities of maize crops, okay? Imagine people using and wanting large quantities of these crops and maize, all right? This is going to drive up the price of the maize and the crops because people want them more and more. And this is going to essentially increase food prices. And this was one of the causing factors of the global food prices of 2007 and early 2008, okay? The, the want for biofuels, okay, was a disadvantage, okay? Now, let's look at bread. That bread, that piece of bread I, t I told you to put down, take a quick bite, okay, let's look at bread. Now, bread, as many of you will know, okay, is made, because you might make it, okay? Bread is made from flour, okay? Now, this flour contains starch, but it also contains a protein known as gluten okay now to make um bread all you do is you use a flour you use water and you use yeast to make the dough and you're going to put this dough in the oven for it to carry out certain processes so let's look at that this is how microorganisms are used to make bread okay essentially the amylase will break down the starch which is in the dough into maltose which will then be broken down into glucose okay now the yeast will use the glucose during anaerobic respiration, during fermentation, all right? And it will produce ethanol, the alcohol, and carbon dioxide. Now, the carbon dioxide gets trapped in the dough. However, this gluten that we mentioned, which is in the dough, okay, is stretchy. So as the carbon dioxide is producing bubbles, the gluten is essentially causing the dough to stretch and it's causing the bread to rise. And that's why the bread rises, because of the gas, okay? Okay, so hopefully by the end of this lesson, you're now able to state why bacteria are used in biotechnology and genetic, genetic engineering. Hopefully you're also able to describe how yeast is used to make ethanol and uh, bread, okay? And hopefully you're also able to explain how biofuels are made. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and revise. Mr. Ashodi, signing out. Wait up, where's my bread? Quick.